They didn't believe me. They had to believe me. They believe you, Bert. Priscilla doesn't believe me. Your wife believes you, Bert. Believes I can't go to jail. I've got a mortgage. You're not going to jail. If I go to jail, Priscilla will take the kids to Idaho. I'll never see them again. I can't look at them. Are they looking at me? They're looking at you, Burton. All rise. Mr. Foreman, have you reached a verdict? We have, Your Honor. The clerk will read the verdict. We, the jury in the aforementioned matter, find the defendant, Burton Rumley, not guilty on all counts. Oh. Mrs. McGinnis, thank you. Thank you, Mrs. McGinnis. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. Excuse me, Dr. Axelrod. The district attorney would like to see you in his office. Thank you, Mr. Right away. Only moments ago, a jury acquitted bookkeeper Burton Rumley of embezzling $2 million from the Vernon Valley Retirement Home, a controversial project started several years ago by its flamboyant director, Dr. Roland G. Axelrod. This verdict now leaves two vital questions still hanging. Where is the money, and who took it? Mrs. McGinnis, were you surprised by the verdict? But it is a major victory, wouldn't you say? You said it, I'll second it. Uh, Mr. Rumley, what are you going to do now? Well, look for a job, I guess. Mr. Rumley, if you didn't take the money, who did? We have no comment about that. Is the district attorney going to press charges against Dr. Axelrod? Why don't you ask him about that? But that's what the jury said, didn't they? If they believed Mr. Rumley, they didn't believe Dr. Axelrod. No comment. I'm a defense attorney, not a prosecutor. Thank you. Oh, Mr. Thank Mr. you. Good day. <laughs> Satanist! Thank you. Daughter of the devil! You destroyed a living saint! Excuse me. Dr. Axelrod was brought here to save us, to heal the lame and the halt, to bring us peace and comfort. Please, let me by. Wait until you're old and sick and alone. See how you feel then, child of Lucifer. Shh. acquittal yesterday of Burton Romley. Charges of fraud and grand theft have been filed against the administrator and founder of the Vernon Valley Retirement Home, Dr. Roland G. Axelrod. Arraignment is scheduled for later this week. And now, back to the breakfast show with Happy Hal Lester. And uh, good, good morning once again to all you guys and gals, especially you sleepy heads trying to grab some extra sack time. It's the good old 15th of May, and Mr. Sun is already peeping over the city, and it looks like another gorgeous day. Hello. Oh, hi, Dad. No, 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 no. I was up. What, are you serious? They're covering the Boston Trawl scene in Phoenix? Hey, you bet. I'm exhausted. I, I, I know. I will. I will. All right. Well, to, to, to be honest with you, I, I totally forgot. No, I really did. Oh, but, but but I got the flowers, and they're they're absolutely beautiful. It was sweet of you to remember. I will, I will. Daddy. Right. Okay. Bye. Love you. Millie, Millie. Now I think I detect a faint whisper of jealousy creeping into your tone. And now what's the problem? You're the problem. I promised, Steve. I told you about Binky's going away party three days ago. But, Mel, I promised my Aunt Ellie I'd take her out to dinner this evening. Your aunt? Oh, thanks. I know it's a very special day. So you'd rather kiss up to some rich relative? That's not fair. My Aunt Ellie's a lovely lady. Fun, sweet, and, and great to be with. Morning. Good morning. 
Steve? Steve, are you there? Yeah, sure, sure. You know, I should be very mad at you, but I'm going to give you one more chance. Dad is coming in for a few days this weekend, and... Dad? Your dad? The ambassador? Of course. Anyway, I want you to meet him. Can you come spend the weekend? Good morning, Eleanor McGinnis. Hi, Elliot Tyler. Oh, hello, Tyler. I want to be the first to congratulate you on your smashing victory yesterday. Thank you. Certainly did make a fool of Ray D'Agostino, and deservedly so. Tyler, he's one of your colleagues in the DA's office. Well, now, Eleanor, really. The men had no case whatsoever. Well, that certainly takes the edge off my smashing victory. Well, I think that this calls for a celebration, hmm? How about having dinner with me tonight? Sorry, I'm going out with Stephen. Steve. Yeah. Your uh, ever present, ever faithful Steve. Don't be snide. Eleanor, forgive me. But you cannot hide your golden glow under a nun's habit for the rest of your life. My glow is none of your business. Ellie, that's been dead for over two years. Now, frankly, neither one of us is getting any younger. What? I said that neither one of us is getting... Oh, younger. never mind. Good morning, good morning. Stephen, I love you dearly, but I am constitutionally ill-equipped at the moment to deal with your natural ebullience. <laughs> when I tell you where I've been invited this weekend, check that. Where we've been invited? What? to Newport to spend three glorious days with Millicent Carrington. Oh, I can hardly wait. And her father, the ambassador, who just happens to be in from Europe for confabs with the president. Oh, no. Oh, come on, Aunt Ellie. He's a very attractive man, widowed and uh, rich. Stephen, for heaven's sakes. I have no intention of being fixed up with Ambassador Carrington, or anybody else for that matter. And if I were interested in kicking up my heels, which I am not, I'm perfectly capable of arranging my own social calendar. Now, is there anything else? Just one. Or have we forgotten what day it is today? <laughs> it's a great day for a birthday. It's a greater day for kicking up your heels. Why the candle blow it out? Now we're gonna sing a shout, and I hope mine is a music that appeals. It's a great day for a party, and you're looking hale and hearty as can be. Though I had no time to bake you a fancy birthday cake, I congratulate you most emphatically. Isn't it great? It's a great day for a lady who is beautiful and quite a sight to see. If you have a favorite song, I will play it right or wrong, and I hope you'll sing along with Harry and me. Thank you very much. It was lovely. That was great, Bernie. McGinnis, is he great? Harry, that is an experience I will never, ever forget. Bernie, if you were thinking of an encore, don't. Well, anyway, I remembered your birthday. One also remembers Pearl Harbor, McGraw. Hey, that guy cost me 20 bucks. Okay, look, anyway, tonight the chow's on me. I found this great little beer joint over in Medford, Stankowski. And you know who's playing there? Vinny and the Polka Dots. Wrong, McGraw. I happen to be taking my Aunt Ellie out to dinner this evening. Are you kidding? Stankowski wouldn't let you in the parking lot. A civilized place where the beef is pink and the chicken isn't? Stop! Stop, stop, stop! I am not going out to dinner with you, Stephen. Tough turkey, kid. And I'm certainly not going out with you, Harry. You guzzle beer while some accordion player damages what remains of our musical sensibilities. It just so happens that I have plans of my own this evening, as difficult as that may be for both of you to imagine. And I will thank you both to keep your collective noses out of my personal life. Thank you very much. What did I say? Good afternoon, ma'am. Welcome to the Seaside Inn. Thank you. Are you checking in? Yes. The name is Jasper, ma'am, and if there's anything you need, just let me know and uh, enjoy your stay. Thank you, Jasper. Bill? 
That was a funny gag, EJ. Funny. And McGinnis just sat there like she had a hot poker between her ears. It's her birthday. She's another year older. She's alone in the world, Harry. And maybe, maybe for the first time, she's come face to face with her own mortality. Oh, good. I'm glad it's nothing serious. The fact is, I'm surprised it hasn't happened earlier. You know, Eleanor leads a very dull life. Yeah. Home, office, home, office. Then all of a sudden, she takes a powder. To show her independence. Listen, kid, there's a lot of nuts running loose in this world. I don't like it. Harry, you're worried about her. Nah. Well, maybe a little bit, so what? Hey, you know where she is. Come on, kid, come on. OK, Harry, I'll tell you where to find her. And when you get there, you tell her how concerned you've been for her. You apologize, and you suggest dinner. Nice dinner, Harry, and you pay. Of course. You think I don't know my way around women? <laughs> Evening. Good evening, Mrs. McGinnis. I have a reservation. Oh, McGinnis. Party of uh, one? One. Very well. Could you follow me, please? Would Madame care for a cocktail? A dry sherry, please. Very good. Good evening. You must be alone. Must I? This table is almost as bad as the one they stuck me with. You're a little bit closer to the kitchen, though, I think. Mind if I join you? Uh, actually... Actually, I prefer eating alone. Walter Campbell. I'm single, I'm a terrific dancer, and I play a mean game of backgammon. Look, Mr. Campbell, tonight is not the best of times. I am only here for the weekend. I think we should waste as little of it as possible. Now, the clams are great. The scribe, almost edible. What do you say, a light Chablis to freshen the palate? Hmm? Uh, may I help you, sir? Uh, no, thanks. Uh, sir, your tie? Oh, yeah, nice, huh? Mr. Campbell, if you do not remove yourself immediately from this table, I'm going to have to get the ma Harry! Uh, there you are. What do you say, McGinnis? Who's this guy? Uh, uh, I was so afraid that you wouldn't get here. Mr. Campbell was just keeping me company until you arrived. It was very nice to meet you, Mr. Campbell. Let's chat again sometime. Until later, then. Real bad news guy. I could tell the minute I saw him. How dare you? It's lucky you. for you I you showed up. You followed me. Come on, in case you didn't notice, I just saved you from that creepola. I didn't need saving. It sure looked that way to me. Were you? What are you doing here? Well, I got hungry. I mean, I, I was just passing by, and... Okay, I didn't like the idea of you being alone. What makes you think that I was going to be alone? Hey, you are alone, aren't you? Hey, McGinnis, now, wait, wait a minute. Excuse me, sir? One dry sherry. Excuse me, sir, can I get your car for you? Uh, no thanks, pal. I parked it myself.
doing it. Insensitive, pig-headed. I didn't want you to be alone. Are you insane, Harry? No, no not even Harry would do. Are you okay? I'm fine. Who was that meatball? I don't know. Probably some drunk driver. No way. That guy was following It was you. an accident. It was a crazy kid. Listen, uh, why don't you come back to the inn and I'll buy you some dinner? No. Hey, come on. This is a once-in-a-lifetime offer. I'm buying. <laughs> hey, look, I'm sorry. I, I mean, whatever I did, I'm sorry. Hey, what I do now? <laughs> this is supposed to be... The happiest day of my life. I just saved a man from a huge prison sentence. I finally have some credibility as a lawyer in my own right. And I feel like an old man again. Well, believe me, you don't look like one. I'm stupid and, and, and dull and, and tired. Hey, you're just hungry, that's all. I'm not hungry. Well... Good night. Hey, where are you going? That, that, that crazy guy could still be around. I'll take my chances. Well, okay, I'll follow you and make sure you get home safe. Home? Home? All right, Harry, you want to follow me? Just follow. How nice to see you. Come. I hope you're alone, Tyler, because if you're not, it's going to get very sticky. Alone? Of course I'm alone. I'm not exactly, of course. Uh, of course, but, but yes, I am alone. <laughs> it is surprising, Ellie. Uh, naturally. Uh, I'm delighted, of course. But would you care to have some brandy. No, let's go to bed. Well, there's nothing like cutting right to the core of the old apple, is there? Me in the guest room, you not. Hmm? Uh, Tyler, I, I, I have too much respect for you as a gentleman and a friend to endanger our relationship with a premature physical encounter. Oh, Eleanor, I'm... I'm willing to take the chance if you will. Tyler, I'm sorry. I... It's just been a very rough day. Oh. Uh, please, just tell me where your guest room is. Tell the stairs first door on the left. But, Eleanor, really, I think if we talk... Hit the lights. I'll see you in the morning. Uh, Ellie, uh, could we start over again? I have this really marvelous cognac. There's some things in life you can depend on, like your mother and the Statue of Liberty and the Red Sox going into the drain in August. Well, forget about it. 
Give me a beer. A beer, Harry? What, do you got wax in your ears? Beer. B-E-E-R-R. -R. Oh, come on. After two years, you're going to let some dame push you off the wagon? Who said anything about a dame? Hey, let me fix you a ginger ale on the house. Cookie, when I need a keeper, I'll tell you. Yeah, ginger ale and two cherries. You got it. Look what's sitting at the bar. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hey, hot shot. How about a game? Sure. Why not? Rack them up. Eight ball, 20 bucks. Make it 50. I'm feeling lucky. 50? Sure. What's the matter, Harry? You look like you just ate a porcupine. Don't worry about it, pal. I'm gonna have you guys for dessert. No kidding. Well, it's the first time for everything. I'll even let you break. <laughs> Eight goes on the break. That's 50. You want to go for double or nothing? Harry? Mm. Oh, what do you say, kid? I say, what's all this? There's money all over the floor. In your pockets, 20s, 50s. Yeah. I won a few bucks last night shooting pool at Gil Hooley's. <laughs> you won it, pool? Hey, I happen to be pretty good with a cue stick. Just the last few months, I've been having a run of bad luck, that's all. Didn't know luck was involved in that game. I was setting these guys up, just waiting for the right moment. Wait a minute. Harry, what were you doing last night at Gil Hooley's? What happened to Eleanor? Oh, yeah, it's another thing. I want you to run a plate number for me. Some yo-yo tried to run McGinnis off the road last night. What? Harry? What went on last night between you two guys? Never mind, E.J., just check the plate number. All right, but, uh... Now! Sure, I just work here. It's not like I'm part of the family or anything. Good morning, Ellie. Hope I didn't wake you up. What would you like for breakfast? Hmm? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Breakfast. Well, I called the office and told them that I wasn't going to be in. That means that the two of us can spend the entire day together, you and me. Uh, uh, Tyler. Yeah. I'm, I'm afraid I have plans. What plans? Um, uh, Tyler. Be a dear and go downstairs and make me some tea and toast. And I'll be downstairs in a minute and we'll talk about it. Oh. All right. I tell you what I'll do. I'll poach you some eggs. I hate eggs. Stephen, it's your aunt. Listen, is that invitation at Newport still open? Oh, good. Now, listen, in 15 minutes, I want you to call me back at 555-9871 and say it's urgent. Urgent! Never mind whose number this is. Just call me. Oh, my. I got the plate number. The car's registered to an Agatha Winston 42 Rigby Road, Brookline. Winston. Winston, Winston. Winston, I know that name. Uh, maybe if you tell me what this is all about. I told you, somebody ran McGinnis off the road last night, and it was no accident. Yowza, yowza, here she is, right in the axelrod file. That case Ellie just won that axelrod? This is Agatha Winston, character witness for Dr. Axelrod. She's a 70-year-old widow living in the Vernon Valley retirement home. An old lady tried to kill Eleanor? Is McGinnis here? No. No? I tried her at the Seaside Inn at her house. Harry, I can't imagine where she'd be. Where's McGinnis? McGinnis! McGraw. Wait a minute, where? 
What makes you think that Eleanor is here in this house? Because I followed her last night. Oh, did you? And sat outside all night watching the house? Hey, I don't need a minute-by-minute -minute description. And I'm not going to give you one, McGraw. What happened in this house last night was a private matter between two consenting adults. Yeah, yeah. So where is she? She left. Half an hour ago, she and her nephew are meeting with a client. She indicated that she'd be away for the weekend. Yeah, but where? I couldn't tell you. She went to her house to pick up some clothes. McGraw, I have to get to the office. Disappoint you, but that is quite impossible. Uh, Miss uh, Twilley. Yeah, Lambert M. Twilley, uh, claims investigator, superior fire and, and casualty. Listen, I'm sorry to disappoint you, but I got two witnesses who eyeballed Mrs. Winston taking half a fender off our insured's new Lamborghini. Mrs. Winston has been with us for seven months, and in that time, I assure you, she's not left the premises. Ray Four Door, license GDS 657. I got it right here. Mr. Twilley. Mrs. Winston is confined to a wheelchair. She cannot walk, let alone drive. Stolen. What? Somebody boosted her car. Oh, boy, who knows what could have happened afterwards? I mean, you know, hit and run, robbery. I better talk to her. As I told you before, that is quite impossible. Listen, honey, was the car parked here at the home? Uh, well, I... Well, because if it no. was, you know, according to paragraph 457, section 2 of the Motor Vehicle Code, you people are contingently liable for any damages caused after the theft. Well, listen, if I can't talk to her, it's no big deal. I'll just let the cops carry the ball. But uh, who carries your insurance? I mean, you better check the liabilities to see if you're covered. J just a moment. Just a moment, Mr. Twill. Um, uh, Mr. Twilly, yes. Yes, I think perhaps you should speak to Mrs. Winston. Briefly. Oh, briefly, yeah. I'm no big gabber. You follow me. Shh! That blind zebra just laid a fourth ball on O'Neill. Yeah? What's the score? 101.98 with a minute ten to go. No kidding, only three points. The spread was eight. Agatha, this is Mr. Twilly. He'd like to ask you about your car. Car? What car? A gray uh, four-door sedan. Oh, that. I haven't driven that thing for two years. Gave it to my son, Walter. Walter? He's a dear boy, but doesn't know diddly about basketball. That's a moving pit. Are you blind, Ramsey? Walter Winston is deeply indebted to Dr. Axelrod for the wonderful care we're taking of his mother. He's not indebted. He's spending my money. And he's scared stiff. Doc Axelrod will go to prison, and then he'll have to take care of me for the rest of his life. Yeah, now, this Walter, is he uh, about medium height, blonde hair, uh, kind of thin on top? No fair, Mr. Twilly. You peek. Huh? Uh, would you come with us, please, sir? Uh, gee, I'd like to. Uh, uh, Dr. Axelrod, and he'd like to talk to you in his office. Hey, take it easy, will you, fellas? You're bruising my elbows. We gotta start somewhere. Keep working, fathead. What's that? You heard me, large bottom. Uh, which one of you all said that? Hey! Which one of you guys said that? I told you fellas not to say anything. So oh, shoot! Yeah! Run, you pussycat! Step on it! I said step on it! I am stepping on it! Come on! Mrs. McGinnis. I'm so delighted that you could join us this weekend. What a pleasure to meet you at last. The pleasure is mine, Mr. Ambassador. Oh, no, no. Just Henry. <laughs> Hi, Daddy. Hello, kitten. Mm -hmm. Daddy, you remember Steve Lacey? Well, of course I do. Good seeing you again, Steve. <laughs> Same here, sir. Uh, Daddy, I want to show Steve around, so you two just get acquainted. I've been here before. Come on, Steve. Eleanor? You don't mind if I call you Eleanor, do you? 
Oh, if you hadn't, I think I would have walked out the door. May I offer you a brandy or something? Oh, it's a little early in the day for me. Well, it is for me, too, but with this Newport crowd, you never know. Would you like a soft drink? Yes, thank you. Good. No ice, please. Right. So what do you think? I think we should just let nature take its course. Well, I understand that uh, belated birthday greetings are in order. Oh, dear. No <laughs> escape. Hit a sour chord, didn't I? Well, yesterday I think I would have burst into tears. As a matter of fact, I think I did. <laughs> but I feel better now, a lot better. Good. Age is just a state of mind anyway. Some of these young pups I work with, little old men with half my ears. <laughs> Eleanor, you and I both know what these kids are up to, right? I'm afraid so. Well, good. Let's just relax and ignore them, okay? Good. Well, what do we do this afternoon? I don't suppose you play tennis, do you? Well, I know which end of the racket to grip. You do? That's mm. marvelous. We'll make it doubles us against the kids. Millicent has a dreadful back end. I would have seen it coming, but the temperature gauge is busted. Have you ever considered euthanasia for this heat? Listen, are you sure McGinnis is down here in Newport? Harry, for the 14th time, you said she was with Steve, and Steve is with Millicent Carrington. Okay, we'll find out where this guy lives while I try to give this thing CPR. Harry McGraw. I'm here to see Mr. Carrington. I'm sorry, sir. The ambassador is not here. If you'd care to leave your card. Yeah, well, actually, pal, I'm looking for a Mrs. Eleanor McGinnis. Uh, redhead, uh, nice looking, about this tall. I'm afraid the lady is not here either. Well, where is she? I'm not at liberty to say, sir. Harry. Uh oh. <laughs> Merciful heavens. Oh, boy. The doctor said this might happen. It's bad circulation. Oh, oh. All she needs is some ice on her neck. Yeah, give me a hand. I got you, honey. It's okay, kid. Uncle Harry's here. I got you. You're gonna be all right now. Gonna be all right. Okay. Here you go. Sir, I, I really think you should take her to a hospital. Uh, no, no. As long as she's breathing, she's fine. See, the doctor said when the big one finally hits, she'll go just like that. So where's that ice pack? Oh, certainly, sir. Way to go, kid. You catch on quick was totally and disgustingly dishonest. Yeah, but smooth, very smooth. Now look, when Jeeves gets back, you stall him for a while so I can have a look around. Harry, look. Newport Shores Racket Club. avoided winning a single point at my expense. A super game, sir. If we had finished, I'm sure you would have had us. If we had finished, I'm sure you would have finished me. Oh, Daddy, you're getting out of shape with all that fancy continental cuisine. You need somebody to look after you. Subtlety is not her strong suit either. Mrs. Eleanor McGinnis? Eleanor McGinnis? Please pick up the courtesy phone. Me? Nobody knows I'm here. There's a phone on the other side of the doorway. Oh, I'll be right back. my mind. What do you want? My car is right outside. Don't turn around. Come on. Open the door. 
Slide across, you're driving. Look, come on, move. I know you. Drive. Oh, no. If you think you are going to ply me with champagne just to get me in some sleazy motel room, Mr. Campbell, you're very much mistaken. I'll drive. Get to a phone. Call the cops. Give them a description of that car. Move it! Look, Mr. Mr. Campbell, there are laws pertaining to... My name is Winst, not Campbell. My mother is being cared for by Dr. Axelrod, a wonderful man, a dedicated, unselfish healer whom you have destroyed, Mrs. McGinnis. Mr. Ca Winston! You can't go unpunished. We can't have that. Someone must see that the scales are balanced. Speed up. I, I, I can't... Do it! Look, we're already going over the speed limit, isn't it? I don't care about the speed limit! All right, Mr. Winston, if, if, if we're going to drive at such excessive speeds, I'm going to have to wear my seat. Are you crazy? Be careful. Sorry, Watch the road. I'm doing the best Are you trying to get us killed? There. Nice and snug. These things really do work. McGinnis, you okay? Yes, I'm all right. Been a hell of a birthday, Harry. What's the matter, kid? Something wrong? Me? Of course not. Is there something bothering you, Harry? Why should anything be bothering me? So, uh, you want to cut a rug? Harry, you don't dance. Are you kidding? They used to call me the king of the Belmont Ballroom. You ever hear of the Lindy Hop? Not lately. Local boys? No, no. We flew them in from L.A. for the weekend. How'd you like them, Mr. McGraw? Me? I stopped listening when Benny Goodman died. E.J., it's a shame you don't dance. I'm afraid I spent my college years getting an education. You had to go to class on Saturday nights? No. Here's to Eleanor. Safe and sound after that terrible experience this afternoon. Oh. I salute a very brave and resourceful woman. Let's go. Jeremy. Jeremy? I'm sorry to interrupt you, sir. No, no, not at all. Um, Jeremy Blake, my good right arm. This is Mrs. McGinnis, Mr. McGraw, Mr. Lacey, Miss Brunson, and I think you know Millicent. How do you do? 
I'm afraid, sir, the president needs to see you immediately. I've got a plane waiting for you at the airport. Oh, damn. Well, another diplomatic crisis. <laughs> I'm sorry. Please, please forgive me. Paul, I want you to make sure that our guests have everything they want. Certainly, Mr. Ambassador. It was lovely meeting you, Eleanor. I want to thank you for a wonderful day. I hope we do it again sometime. I look forward to that. Excuse me. Jeremy! I thought you were overseas. I was. Then how come you never answered any of my letters? You wrote? I never got them. I thought you were never speaking to me again. And I thought you were ignoring me. Look, I think we need to talk. <laughs> yes. On the plane, do you have room? Well, yes, of course, but what about... Let's go. Uh, Millicent? Oh, uh, Steve. It's been a really lovely day. Thank you so much. Ciao. Come on, good looking. Let's dance. Dance? But I thought... You don't think I told that uh, twit the truth, do you? Someday you're going to have to tell me all about those weekends at Iowa State. Don't hold your breath. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I left one of my earrings in his guest bedroom. Guest bedroom? What were you doing in his guest bedroom? Sleeping. What else? Well, I thought... I know what you thought, because that's what I wanted you to think. And, and I thought if you thought it, that you would... Oh, what the hell. <sighs> I'm sorry. Forgive me. Sure. Good. Let's dance. Oh, my goodness. I mean, I'd like to, but I, I don't do that perking and jerking around. I'm more of a Glenn Miller kind of guy, you know? Just one thing. I'm leading. Harry, I wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> 